In this video, we're going to talk about reusable components in Touch Designer. While you can sort of get away without using them for smaller projects, they're a really critical part of the workflow when you want to take things to the next level. We'll go over what they are, when it makes sense to use them, and some best practices for working with them. In Touch Designer, the term component refers to any of the operators on the comp page of the opcreate dialog. That includes stuff like the geocomp or the light comp that are related to rendering. It also includes things related to UI panels like the button comp or the container comp, as well as more specialized things like window or animation. There's also the base comp, which doesn't have any special functionality built into it. For this video, we're going to be focusing on base comps. Each comp can have a network of operators inside it. In fact, every network in a project is inside a comp of some sort. The default new project has a comp named Project 1, and that's where you start creating things most of the time. Above that, there's a special hidden comp called root, and that's where these operators live. You'll never see the root comp in a network, though, since that would mean that there was something above it to contain it, and that isn't the case for the root. You can navigate inside a comp by selecting it and pressing I, or by double-clicking it. I tend to think of components in a few different categories. The first are things like the geocomp or the window comp that have a specific purpose, and second are what I think of as structural components, which is where you organize part of a project into a tree of components rather than just having everything in one big network. And then last are reusable components, which is what we're going to be focusing on for this video. One of the main ways that you work with components is through their inputs and outputs. To create an input, you can create an in operator, like an in shop. And then when you go up a level, you'll see an inlet on the side of that component, and you can hook that up to a shop. And then when you go back in, the contents of that shop will show up here. Then to do an output, you can add an out chop. And then when you go back up, there's going to be an outlet there, and you can connect it up to other chops. To make this do something useful, you can insert things between the two if you want. So we can add a math chop. And then we can set multiply to two or something. So we now have a component that will double the value of whatever channel goes into it. Here we can change the input and then it's always going to apply that same behavior and produce that output. There are in and out operators for a lot of the different families, including tops, chops, sops, mats, and dats. You can have as many inputs and outputs as you want. So here I'll add a text top and just display the value of this channel in here. It doesn't really matter, but then we can add an out top after that. And so now when we go up a level, there's a second output here for a top. When you start to have multiple inputs and outputs, it can get kind of confusing keeping track of which is which, especially if you have a bunch that are of the same type. Each of these in and out operators has this connect order parameter, and it will use those to add the inputs or outputs in descending order. So if we were to call this, put this one as order two, and then this one stays order zero, then that top output's going to show up first, and then the chop below it. The operators also have this label parameter, which by default uses an expression to just use the name of that operator. And when you mouse over one of the inputs or outputs, you'll get a little tooltip with the contents of that label. So you can use this to add, you know, useful labels for things. So what if we want to use this component in a network and make it easy to change the number that it's multiplying things by? To do that, we can add custom parameters to the component, and then inside it, we can reference those with expressions or parameter chops. You can edit them by either right-clicking on a comp and choosing Customize Component, or you can go inside it and right-click in an open spot in the network and choose Customize Parent Component. That'll pop open this Component Editor dialog. 
to add a custom parameter, you can put in a name here, select the type, click add, and it will add a parameter. So now when you go up a level, there's this page of parameters here. We now have our multiply. You use that within this operator. You can open the parent parameters in a pop-up window and then drag this parameter in, choose reference, and now it will automatically update with the value of wherever the parameter is on the component. There are a bunch of different types of parameters that you can use, but I'm not going to cover those in this video. Now that we have a component that does something and a way to control that behavior, we can start using that component. So if you want to have two of these in your project, your first instinct might just be to copy and paste. And that works okay. And you could hook up a different input and, you know, set the parameters to something different and so on. But what happens if you decide that you want to change something across all of them? So you want to use, you know, a different color for the text or something. So you could go into this one and, you know, go into the parameters and change the color to something. And then you would need to go to the other one and then make sure to change it in the same way and make sure you don't change it to something slightly different. And that will at least kind of work for now, but it's going to become kind of a pain to maintain that, especially as you end up with more and more of these, or you want to make more complicated changes. So this is where cloning comes in. To make a clone, you can create an component of the same type, like here we're using a base. And then on the common parameter page, there's this clone master parameter. If you drag another component into that, then it will make this component a clone of that original one. And you'll notice that as soon as we did that, it automatically added these inputs and outputs here. And it also added the custom parameters. Whenever you change things in the original master operator, it's going to automatically update all the clones. If you go inside one of the clones, you'll notice that the network editor is kind of darker and it's showing this clone marker up in the corner there. And that means that we're inside a clone. So you can change things in here, but the next time that you update the master, it's going to wipe out those changes. And it also sometimes does that if you're loading the project in the first place. The only exception to that are operators that use this clone immune setting. And you'll notice that it kind of lightens up the, the operator in the network. And now this will retain these changes, even if the master changes. I don't recommend doing that though, because it can get really confusing to manage unless you really, really need it to be the case. So if you switch that back off, then it'll just revert to whatever is going on in the master. Or anything that you want to have be different between the clones, like multiplier, you can use a custom parameter to control that. And then the two different instances of this can have different values for those multipliers and they can have different inputs and outputs. So when is this useful? Basically, anytime that you want to have multiple copies of some sort of functionality or some feature that might differ with only a few properties, like our multiply parameter. If you find yourself laying out the same set of operators over and over, that might be a good time to put those things into a component and use clones instead of just copying and pasting. There is even a shortcut in the network editor where you can select an operator, right click an open spot in the network and choose collapse selected. And it will create a component with inputs and outputs as needed and move that operator inside it. There are some cases where this might break things like expressions, but in general, it tends to work pretty well. Components are also a great way to share things between projects, especially if you're storing them in external docs files, although that's a whole other topic that I'll probably cover in a separate video. I've developed a set of practices around creating and using components that works well for me. There are definitely other opinions out there, but I think in general, most of this shouldn't be too controversial. When cloning is involved, 
I like to clearly define one component as a master. That component itself is never actually used in the project, but clones of it are. I call these clones instances since they're analogous to instances in other programming languages. So I'll often have a base comp named components, and I'll put all of the master components within that. And then elsewhere in the project, I'll have clones of those. I'll typically name these with either a verb phrase like colorize or a noun thing like colorizer or something like that. To make it easy to make clones, I'll typically take the path of that master component and then on the master component for its clone master, I'll put that path in there. And Touch Designer is smart enough to realize that this is pointing to itself. So if you go inside here, it's going to not treat this as though it's a clone. But now if you make a copy of this, then it will automatically have that clone master set up. So you could put that somewhere else in your project and it will automatically be connected up. When you want to add or change something inside the component, you're going to need to be intentional about how you do that. Often, if you aren't using cloning, this might just involve copying and pasting it and then just changing one of them. And with clones, you could do that by going in and marking things as clone immune. But I really don't recommend doing that. It can be hard to know exactly which parts need to be made immune. And it's likely that in the future, you'll end up making a change to the master and it might break the modified versions. I only really do that in situations where I have to do things really quickly, like if I'm on site debugging an installation. Doing it correctly, though, is really preferred. If it's changed that you want to just apply everywhere to all the different instances, then you can just go into the master and change it and you're done. But if it's something that you want to have be different in one instance versus another, you're going to need to add a custom parameter to control it. So that could be something as simple as just having, you know, a, a toggle that connects up to a switch operator or something inside, or it could mean, you know, having a default, adding a new input and then having a default for, you know, components that don't connect anything to that. But in general, the idea is rather than just changing one of the instances, you kind of add the ability to be different to the template, and then some of the instances use that, and then some of them don't. So to recap, components are a great way to create reusable elements that you can use to build out your projects. You can use in and out ops to create inputs and outputs, so you can pass operators into the component and get stuff back out. Custom parameters allow you to define settings to control how the component behaves. And cloning lets you set up a single template and then have multiple instances of it elsewhere in the project with different inputs and different settings to do different stuff. Components are a really fundamental part of how I tend to approach Touch Designer, so hopefully you found this useful. In future videos, I'll get into related topics like using external tox files or structural components and so on. If you like this video and want to support me making more of them, consider subscribing to my Patreon. You'll get exclusive downloads, early tutorial access, and a bunch of Ray TK stuff. And even if you don't feel like paying, you can still subscribe for free as a way to get Ray TK announcements. Thanks for watching and make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on that notification setting.